Greetings motherfuckers, my name is Sam, and today we'll be enrolling in Greendale's second best community college. As we look at NBC's, no, wait, Yahoo Screens, yep, that happened, cult classic, Community. Yes, to its fans, it's one of the most creative comedies ever made, full of people who you recognize from that thing. See? That person from that thing. And another one. And another one. But why did Donald Glover, aka Childish Gambino, leave the show? Did Black Mirror really steal from Community? And am I Sam or Evil Sam from the Darkest Timeline and there's a better Sam out there who's cool and funny and has a great goatee beard? Ha <laughs> ha, you'll never know. Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so grab yourself a flag that looks like an anus and dress up as the Greendale human being and start adding the words Dean and Chang into literally everything you say because this is 101 Facts About Community. Number one. In case you were baffled by what I was winding on about just then, Community is a show created and written by Dan Harmon, who you may know already as the man who co-created Adult Swim hit Rick and Morty, and from his rambling live podcast show Harmon Town. Number two. Community is about a group of misfits in a, yes, that's right, community college. It stars Danny Pudi, Donald Glover, Alison Brie, John McHale, Yvette Nicole Brown, Julian Jacobs, and Chevy Chase. This cast does chang a little bit in some seasons, but this is the OG study group, son! Number 3. Greendale Community College is based on Harmon's experience at Glendale Community College, where he took a Spanish class with his then girlfriend, and then befriended his Spanish study group. Sound familiar? Well, that's because the rest is history. <laughs> Not his class, he still studied Spanish. It's a phrase, guys. Number 4. Harmon says that Jeff Winger is based on himself and his own jaded egotism, as he too grew attached to his study group despite them being a bunch of strangers who didn't share his interests. Looking at how attractive they made the character of Jeff, I'd say that ego thing checks out. Number 5. Weirdly, there is a real community college called Greendale Community College, but it's in Dublin, Ireland. If that's not weird enough, it's a 10 minute drive away from a town called Harmonstown, which is a very similar name to Dan Harmon's aforementioned podcast, Harmontown. Number 6. The study room they use is in study room F, and it features two tables, a chalkboard, a TV, and eight chairs. Since there is usually only seven study group members, one chair is usually left vacant, and it's almost always the one next to Jeff. Sounds like a neat little metaphor for Jeff's emotionally isolated nature to me. Neat. Number seven. The seeds order for the Greendale 7 has a very specific logic to it. They wanted to pair Pierce and Troy as a comedy duo, Jeff and Britta were paired for romantic purposes, and Pierce was put next to Shirley to make inappropriate advances. Number 8. With Troy and Arbed sat together, you might think that their pairing was intentional. It completely wasn't though. It was just a coincidence that Danny Pudi and Donald Glover happened to have great chemistry. Number 9. Speaking of those guys, Arbed was based on a real man named Arbed Gaith, who worked with Harmon on Channel 101. Hmm, Channel 101, that sounds familiar. Harmon even wanted the original Arbed to land the role, but Danny Pudi got it instead. Number 10. Much like his character in the show, Danny Pudi is from a family of half-Polish, half-Indian immigrants and was born in Chicago, Illinois. He found out he got the role of Arbed on his birthday. Number 11. Getting Arbed right for Pudi was a lot of work. He initially tried scenes where Arbed would cry during his more emotional moments, but they were never used, instead going for a more vague and introspective performance which defines his character. <laughs> Even in the impressions Arbed does, Pudi has to work hard to make it sound like Arbed expressing himself rather than just a silly voice. Oh, okay, the script now says, Do your best Nicolas Cage impression. That wasn't bad. Number 12. So this line from Troy and Arbed's Christmas rap which states, If years were seasons, this December would be the December of our December. Took me a long time to understand. However, luckily Dan Harmon gave a handy explanation, saying that if years which contain four seasons were seasons in a four-season story, winter of season three would be the coldest and darkest. The word season alludes to yearly seasons, seasons of the show, and the yearly season this season of TV has aired. Yeah, it's a lot. I still don't get it, if I'm honest. Number 13. One of our bed's favorite shows, Inspector Space Time, is a very heavy-handed reference to Doctor Who, which replaces Daleks with Blorgons, Companions with Constables, and the Sonic Screwdriver with a Quantum Spanner. Cool, 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 cool. Number 14. The song Somewhere Out There, which Troy and Arbed sing to coax out a mouse named Fievel, was from the 1986 film An American Tale, which is about a Jewish-Russian mouse named Fievel trying to find his family in America. Number 15. While you may know that Troy is a Jehovah's Witness in the show, you may not know that Donald Glover himself was raised as one too. This meant that he did not grow up with TV, despite him eventually wanting to become a writer and actor on TV. His parents still support him though, even though they say they don't really understand what it is he does. Number 16. 
Unfortunately, Donald Glover ended up leaving the show halfway through season 5. He left mostly because he wanted to work on his own project, his main one being the FX TV show Atlanta. This ended up winning over a dozen awards, so the fall of Troy was probably for the better. Hashtag weird place for a Greek mythology reference. Number 17. He was written off by having Troy sail the ocean with Reading Rainbow's LeVar Button to come sail away. Both are references to earlier episodes, such as the one where Troy freezes up after meeting Button, as a massive fan of Reading Rainbow, and Come Sail Away by Styx is a song that has made Troy cry. Though Troy cries a lot and often. Me too, man. Me too. Number 18. The boat Pierce gives to Troy is called the Childish Tycoon. <laughs> now, does that sound familiar? Of course it does, because you're all community fans who are also fans of Donald Glover. 100% demographic crossover. It's because it sounds like Childish Gambino. Number 19. They don't let our Donald off that easily though, as they have Troy's airline criticizing Zach Braff for leaving Scrubs so early, and that he's ungrateful towards the show that made him. Funnily enough, Zach Braff appeared in six episodes of Scrubs season 9, while Glover left season 5 of Community after only 5, so Glover arguably is worse. Number 20. The show references Joe McHale's own show, The Soup, now and then, first with Jeff's line, You ask him to pass the salt, he gives you a bowl of soup. Because you know what? Soup is better. And I am offering you an opportunity to spend the night drinking from the cup of life rather than romancing your nether regions in front of the E channel. By the way, the soup is on the E channel. I quite like cream of chicken myself. Number 21. In return, Mikhail got the cast of Community onto his last ever episode of the show, The Soup, for a special goodbye extravaganza. Even Mikhail's dead grandma showed up, who said she wasn't really dead, but she staged the whole thing after seeing the fourth season of Community. <laughs> Absolutely brutal. Number 22, ooh, 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 ooh. The IT Crowd. Now there's a show that's beloved all over GB. They tried it in America though, and did anyone see the terrible US pilot for it? Dear God, it was awful. Joel McHale was in it though as Roy, in possibly the worst casting I've ever seen. If it got picked up for a full series, which it didn't, McHale would not have been available for Community until a year later. That would have been a Chang for the worst. Screw you. Number 23. Annie Kim, the Asian Annie in the show, was inspired by Harmon originally wanting the character to be cast as either Asian or Latina. This would of course end up changing as Alison Brie was then cast instead. Sorry, I got distracted. Number 24. In season 1, Arbed tries to seduce Annie by doing a sexy Don Draper impression. This is a cute little nod to Alison Brie's role as Trudy in Mad Men. Oh, stupid sexy Arbed. Number 25. Event Nicole Brown left Community after season 5 as well. This wasn't a dramatic break, but a somber one, as she left to look after her sickly father. She got a role in The Odd Couple, which had more manageable hours, and despite the backlash she got from some absolutely stupid internet fans, she has no regrets. Good for her. Number 26. When casting for the character of Pierce, some of the actors considered for the role included Fred Willard, John Cleese, and Patrick Stewart. They of course went with Chevy Chase in the end, but hell's bells, Patrick Stewart would have been F-U-N. Number 27. They did eventually get Fred Willard to play Arbed's dream version of Pierce in season 4, since Chevy had since left the show. We'll get on to why later on, but it's a fun, fun story. Number 28. Pierce Hawthorne made his money from his family's towelette company, Hawthorne Wipes. Chase himself was brought up with a family fortune derived from the Crane Plumbing Company, which dealt with toilets and sanitary facilities. Hot. Number 29. The Chevy Pierce similarities don't stop there either. Chevy's real name is Cornelius Crane Chase, while Pierce's father in the show is called Cornelius Hawthorne. I'm almost 50% sure Cornelius Crane is the name of a Batman villain. Number 30. According to John McHale, old man Chevy Chase continuously tried to fight him on set, despite McHale being the reluctant but physically superior combatant. Chase asked McHale to punch him for real on set, and McHale eventually complied. He dislocated Chevy's shoulder in the process because apparently punches can cause bodily harm. Who knew? Number 31. The character of Ben Chang is played by Ken Jeong and has had a different role at Greendale for each season of the show. He's been a Spanish teacher, a student at Greendale, a security guard, an amnesiac, we didn't necessarily say job role, a math teacher and an actor all in that order. Number 32. Ken Jeong, proving to be completely different from his character, is actually a doctor in real life. From this, he managed to use both comedy acting and his real doctorate on his comedy show Dr. Ken that got Dr. Cancelled after season 2. Number 33. Writer Jim Rash wasn't actually cast for the role of Dean Pelton until after the pilot had already started filming. Even after then, he was only upgraded to series regular in season 3, although he has written one episode and directed two of them as well. Number 34. The Dean has worn over 45 fancy costumes across the entire history of the show. 
When asked, Jim Rash says he loves all the costumes, but his favourites were from the flashback episode, which included Tina Turner, Catwoman, and Julius Caesar while promoting a Caesar salad. Dean Licious. Number 35. Jim Rash has a, uh, an Oscar. Hmm. Yes, that's right, this man here, he has an Oscar. How does he have an Oscar? Well, he won his Academy Award for Best Writing Adapted Screenplay on The Descendants back in 2012. That's how. He has an undeniable talent. Number 36. The show has had an absolute truckload of celebrity cameos, including, but not limited to, John Goodman, Jack Black, Owen Wilson, wow, Patton Oswalt, Seth Green, and Captain Marvel herself, Brie Larson. No sign of Jennifer Lawrence yet, though. Number 37. The show has also had a fair share of Breaking Bad actors too, including Matt Jones, who plays Badger, Giancarlo Esposito, who plays Gilbert in Community and Gus Fring on Breaking Bad, and Season 5 regular Jonathan Banks, who plays Mike in Breaking Bad and Professor Buzz Hickey in Community. They also managed to get Breaking Bad creator and showrunner Vince Gilligan to make a fun appearance on the show as a cowboy guide on an old VCR game. Number 38. There are plenty of jokes in Community which end up spanning multiple episodes and wouldn't necessarily be noticed by the average viewer. For example, Troy suggests to Jeff take a pottery class or something. And then 13 episodes later, he does so in the episode Beginner Pottery. I tried pottery once, it was Clayhem. <laughs> Number 39. After the writers realised that the word Beetlejuice had been said two times already over the entire show, they had a man dressed as Beetlejuice walk by in the background when the word was uttered for a third and final time. It's a subtle joke and shows an incredible attention to detail. Number 40. Arbed mentions the show Cougar Town a lot. Besides being a show that he likes, he mentions that he visited the set, played an extra, and sold his pants there. This seems true to life, as Danny Pudi, clearly playing Arbed, is an extra in one of the Cougar Town episodes, and also goes to Brown Town, as in he soiled himself. Don't reinterpret that. Number 41. In almost every single season, Community has a paintball episode, which basically writes everything that normally happens out the window to have the car shoot at each other with paintballs. The first paintball episode, Modern Warfare, might well be one of Community's most successful. Besides being really fun, it was directed by Justin Lin, who has directed a bunch of the Fast and Furious films and Star Trek Beyond. The Meaning of Life the Christmas special, Arbet's Uncontrollable Christmas, was created completely with stop motion, made to imitate the Rankin Bass Christmas specials. The idea for a generally animated episode and not necessarily stop motion came from an NBC executive who said their show reminded them of Family Guy. Despite the fact the exec clearly didn't understand the show, it's nothing like Family Guy, they used his word as leverage to greenlight the project. Number 43. The stop motion idea for the Christmas special came from Starburns actor and veteran writer Dino Stamatopoulos, who was already hoping to start an animation company with Dan Harmon. They then used that money to start up Starburns Industries, which would go on to produce Anomalisa and Rick and Morty. Number 44. It turns out that Dino doesn't really like acting or playing our beloved Starburns or acting in general, mostly because of the long hours on set and in makeup, but also because he felt there wasn't much to his character other than having sideburns shaped as stars and being annoyed by the nickname Starburns. This did give him the name Starburns Industries though, so good things came out of it, don't worry Dino, we still love you and your Jurassic sounding Greek name. Number 45. The composer for the Christmas special was Ludwig Juransson, who co-produced Donald Glover's Childish Gambino music and scored Ryan Coogler's Creed and Black Panther. Number 46. This video game episode is stylized mostly with 8-bit graphics and music, reminiscent of the Nintendo Entertainment System. It also references a ton of video games at the same time, including Mega Man, Zelda, and Super Mario Bros. 3, with those video game sections produced by animation studio Titmouse. <laughs> Sorry, that's a funny name though, isn't it? Number 47. The game Journey to the Center of Hawkthorn was recreated by Reddit users on the subreddit r Hawkthorn. You can play as all Greendale 7 and features a remix soundtrack based on the music from the episode. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Number 48. Many, <clears throat> Many people really love the episode of Black Mirror where people give each other ratings out of 5 stars, but community fanatics are always quick to point out that their favorite show did the concept first, in the episode Ab Development and Condiments. That's right, Meow Meow Beans gave me an existential crisis first. Number 49. Black Mirror creator Charlie Brooker has since said he hadn't seen the Meow Meow Beans episode, but had been working on the ideas for years. Turns out an earlier version of Nose Dive featured a man trying to get his social score down from 100 to 0, a la Bruce's Millions, before settling on the 5 star Uber rating format. This fact has been a small diversion away from community, let's get back to it. Number 50. The Dungeon and Dragons episode came about from Dan Harmon playing the game as a kid. Despite having serious backlash from NBC execs, Harmon fought tooth and nail for the episode to be made. 
It was successful enough to spawn a second one, and Harmon plays it on his podcast Harmontown and his show Harmon Quest. Turns out D&D can turn a tidy profit if in the right hands. Number 51. The Pillows and Blankets episode was made as a parody of a Ken Burns documentary written by Andy Bobro. This isn't the first time he parodied Ken Burns either, as he also did so with a 10 minute short called The Old, well, that's the title there. This mockumentary was about black astronauts excluded from a white NASA, who instead founded their own space program called NASA. Number 52. Remedial Chaos Theory is probably one of the best episodes in the whole community, and it heavily features the song Roxanne by the police. This supposedly used up most of season 3's budget, which led to the song Daybreak being used so frequently for the rest of the season. Number 53. Daybreak by Michael Haggins is a jazz song which has appeared on 12 episodes and is considered to be Arbed's favourite song. It's not the only number of Haggins which has appeared in the show either, as the songs Be Thankful and Hooked on You have also both appeared, though they're not quite as popular or infectiously catchy as Daybreak. Number 54. The creators of the show like putting the episode numbers into the show itself, as seen on Troy and Arbed's apartment in Season 3 Episode 4, Remedial Chaos Theory. But wait! You might audibly say to your PC monitor displaying this video or phone, because we won't get a lot of views on phones. It says 303 on the door! Did you say 304? Not 303, I wrote it down twice. You're right, it was supposed to be the third episode, but it was pushed back. Which is why Annie asks if it should be 304. Incidentally, on the DVD, the episode is back at Season 3 Episode 3 instead. Number 55. This jokey numbering scheduling mix-up happened again in Season 4 Episode 3, which shows Jeff and Annie's hotel room to be 404. This time the episode was pushed forward, probably to ruin this joke a second time. Number 56. Arbed delivers an entire baby- <laughs> an entire baby as opposed to a part of one, what am I about? In the background of the episode The Psychology of Letting Go, nine months after the Politics of Human Sexuality episode. Incidentally, this was also the episode where Arbed warns everyone not to use prophylactics. Whoopsie baby. Number 57. Here's another little detail too. Britta, Shirley and Annie are doing the monkey morality pose in regional holiday music when Troy and Arbed coax Pierce into their troupe with their baby boomer song. That's not just an emoji, people. That's to do with the old adage see no evil, hear no evil and speak no evil, which dates back to Confucius. There, look at that. We all learned something today. Number 58. Let's take a minute to talk about Annie's boobs. Now we all know that Annie's boobs stole the pen in cooperative calligraphy. Oh sorry, I forgot to say, Annie's boobs is the name of Troy's pet monkey. What you might not know is that you can see the moment the pen is stolen if you've got a keen eye. It's here, look, right there in the cold open. Not a euphemism. Number 59. Annie's boobs was played by Crystal the monkey, who has had a long and illustrious acting career. Her first acting job was in George of the Jungle and she has since appeared in Doctor Doolittle, Night at the Museum, The Big Bang Theory and The Hangover Part 2 and 3. That's monkey business for you. Number 60. The show takes plenty of shots at its competitors, mostly Glee. Glee Club here. They first took a dig at the college's Glee Club in Modern Warfare when the gang shot them out of a tree. But they eventually went in on the full offensive in regional holiday music, a whole episode dedicated to mocking the school's Glee Club as the study group gets slowly infected with musical cheer. Number 61. Leonard's Frozen Food Review is clearly a parody of those weird YouTubers who actually review everyday foods, but it also features a vanity card at the end. This is a dig at Chuck Lorre, the producer who would put vanity cards on at the end of The Big Bang Theory, which rambled on about an opinion he had. Yep, cool, any dig at The Big Bang Theory is fine by me, because that show is a load of- <laughs> Number 62. Do you like brick jokes? Well, watch our Lego movie video after this, but for now, Community also has a really quite long-winded one. Troy and Arbed get told off for propping open their door with a brick in Remedial Chaos Theory. The door downstairs was propped open with this. Then, 15 episodes later, a policeman tells them off for the same thing, but only because that specific brick is an antique worth $50 to $60. This is a very literal interpretation of the TV trope called the Brick Joke, which is all about jokes with incredibly delayed punchlines. Number 63. Magnitude, you know, the guy who keeps saying, Pop, pop! is played by the frankly wizard-sounding Luke Youngblood, which is ironic really given that he played Lee Jordan in Harry Potter. He's the little kid who does all the announcing for the Quidditch matches. Nintendo 64. Dino Stamatopoulos popularised the word crunk. Yes, that's a real sentence that I just said. Crunk music may have gotten popular with your little Johns and your trick daddies of the world all the way back in the noughties, but the word crunk predates them all. While it was initially used in Atlanta in the 80s as a kind of mashup of chronic and drunk, it appeared on Late Night with Conan O'Brien in 1993, written by our very own Starburns. This is because he wanted to come up with a fake swear word which would get past the censors. Number 65. 
To raise environmental awareness, NBC got its comedies Community, The Office, 30 Rock and Parks and Rec to incorporate eco-friendly messages into their episodes. Community of course did this by having the Dean promote Green Week by wasting materials willy-nilly. Number 66. Community, despite being filmed in California, yay, is set in Colorado. Oh. The reason for this is purely so they wouldn't get in trouble with the real Glendale Community College, which is also in California. I don't know why they wouldn't want to be associated with Community. Oh, that's right, their flags and anus. Number 67. Ironically, the show is filmed at Los Angeles City College. City College is the name of Greendale's direct and superior college. It's also fun to note that we never see what City College actually looks like properly, since no outside scenes ever occur there. Number 68. The Louise Guzman statue is a little gag about how desperate and terrible Greendale is to have any form of prestige. Which is kind of a dig at Louise, really, but there we go. However, the creators initially had someone else in mind. Dan Harmon actually asked Mark Hamill if he was okay with his likeness being made into a crappy bronze statue, but Hamill very politely wrote a letter declining the request. Number 69. And he's the monkey. Richard Ayoade, the comedian who portrays Moss on cult comedy favourite The IT Crowd, Memory is Ram, directed the episode of Community called Critical Film Studies. I'm still just glad the John McHale IT crowd didn't get made, because what an absolute dumpster fire that what sorry, I, I know I shouldn't go on about it, but it, it really just haunts me. Number 70. Avengers Infinity War might be the biggest film of all time, and certainly the best. But its directors, Anthony and Joseph Russo, worked on the rest of development and community before Marvel gave them their big break with Captain America the Winter Soldier. So Infinity War might not have been as good as it was if it wasn't for community. Number 71. It was actually because of community that the Russos got their job at Marvel. The executives were apparently very impressed with their two-part paintball season two finale. Try saying that ten times after landing a directing job for Marvel Studios. Number 72. Despite becoming regulars on the biggest franchise of all time, they didn't forget their roots as they gave communities Danny Pudi and Jim Rash cameos and bit parts in their Captain America movies as a nice little nod. Number 73. While there wasn't a community reference in Avengers Infinity War, the Russos seemed to be making up for it by casting Ken Jeong in Avengers Endgame. My money is on him being Thanos' proctologist after Ant-Man attempts to take him down from the inside. What? That's a very popular fan theory. And my fan fiction. Number 74. Dan Harmon and the Russo brothers had fun with their A Dan Harmon slash Russo brothers after credits placard, changing it every now and then in various humorous ways. Number 75. While the Russo brothers directed 21 of the episodes, they were beaten to directing the most by Tristram Shapiro, who has 24 under his belt. Episodes, I mean, not anything else. He has since worked on The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and Glow. Number 76. The lovely cheery upbeat main theme song is called At Least It Was Here by The 88. Considering how cheery and upbeat it sounds, it actually sounds quite depressing. Really, listen to the lyrics. Some speculate about whether it's a breakup or a man wanted to take his own life. Woo, comedy. Number 77. Dan Harmon's Rick and Morty also features a very deliberate community reference as well, when Rick's ex hive mind Unity puts on a TV show for him. He asked them to make them cry, but happy cry, make them make fun of the blonde one and then cancel it before uncancelling it. If that wasn't overt enough of a nod, there's a shot on the TV showing the original study group recreated as Unity. Number 78. We've got more Rick and Morty community related trivia, ooh wee! Arbed and Brie Larson's character can be seen watching Rick and Morty in Season 5 Episode 6. With how big Rick and Morty has gotten, it would be weird if he wasn't already into it. Number 79. Rick and Morty co-creator Justin Roiland also shows up in Season 6 as a wacky improvised stop-motion character called Ice Cube Head, where he does that voice that he always does for every wacky improvised character. Hey everybody, look at me, I'm Ice Cube Head! Whoa, hey, I'm, I'm wacky improvised cartoon Sam, whoa, look at me, ha! That's what it sounds like. Number 80. Dan Harmon invented a widely used story structure tool called Story Circle, a type of revised version of the hero's journey model. He used it extensively in Community and his other works, and has taught it in screenwriting classes to this very day. Number 81. Hey, here's a crime, Community has never won an Emmy. Rick and Morty has, but Dan Harmon's first Emmy win would be for writing Hugh Jackman's opening to the 2009 Oscars. Which is fair enough, he did get Hugh Jackman to sing the words, I'm Wolverine. Worthy of an Emmy, surely. Number 82. Jeff Winger uses the codename Gwynifer to hide his and Britta's relationship, but the name actually comes from a Twitter user who called Dan Harmon a fat bigot. Harmon, who is all for a little bit of petty revenge, decided to use that Twitter handle in the show. Number 83. 
The verbal wildfire that is streaked ahead, coined by Pierce, was inspired by another insult Dan Harmon received on Twitter. It read, both Modern Family and Glee are streaked ahead of your... a phrase I can't say. After Harmon continuously berated this person with his mockery of the phrase, he put it in the show. <laughs> streaked ahead. Number 84. The joke may well be on Harmon though when it comes to the phrase streets ahead, as while the show may have introduced the phrase to the American lexicon, streets ahead has already been in the UK and Ireland for 130 years. Sounds like it's Dan Harmon who's streets behind, am I right, Pierce? Number 85. Hey, here's something as well. It turns out that Chevy Chase is difficult to work with. People who have worked with him have said he struggles with the very long hours involved in shooting a TV show like Community, and he wasn't a fan of the writing. You know, both of those things are pretty essential. Chase refused to turn up for the final day of shooting season 3, which meant that a very heartfelt scene involving Pierce in a video game rendition of his father had to be cut. Number 86. While Chevy might not be so ace, Dan Harmon isn't exactly squeaky clean either. In response to his rude behaviour, Harmon berated Chevy in front of his family and got a crowd of people to chant F you Chevy at him. Chevy then left Harmon a quite abusive voicemail, which Harmon then released to the public. So yeah, they're on good terms. Number 87. This whole incident led Sony, who owned the show at the time, to fire Dan Harmon from his own show. That's like firing Joss Whedon from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which if you haven't seen you should, it's a little dated but still good. Number 88. The drama of course didn't end there, as executive Bob Greenblatt claimed afterwards that while Dan Harmon was fired, he expected him back as a consulting producer, or at least in some form of advisory role. Dan Harmon hit back at this, publicly stating he's never called me once in the entire duration of his employment at NBC, and that they're not a credible source of all news Dan Harmon. Ouch, paintball pellets fired. Number 89. In solidarity against Dan Harmon's departure, Dono Stamatopoulos, the Russo brothers and executive producers Garrett Donovan and Neil Goldman all left after season 3. Though the Russo brothers left to direct Captain America for the Winter Soldier, so they probably would have left anyway, but still, solidarity, brother. Number 90. Harmon was replaced by Moses Port and David Guarcio for season 4, who'd worked on the CW's Aliens in America, which only ran for a season because nobody watched it. What could go wrong? Number 91. The show managed to bring back Dan Harmon at the wheel for season 5. He only managed to get the job back after John McHale, with the support of the rest of the cast and crew, demanded his return, saying that the show wasn't the same without him. Trust Jeff to bring the gang back together with a rallying speech, eh? Number 92. Along with Harmon, Stamatopoulos and Chris McKenna returned for season 5, along with a little cameo from Pierce Hawthorne himself, Chevy Chase. Number 93. They didn't actually expect to get Chase back at all for the hologram scene, for, well, fairly obvious reasons, really. Because of this, the script at the table read featured Starburns returning instead of Pierce, since he was MIA, or at least secretly faked his own death. Number 94. The show was eventually cancelled on NBC after season 5, since the ratings fell during season 4 and never recovered, all despite Harmon's return. That NBC executive Bob Greenblatt explained that it didn't make sense for us to have another season of it at that level of audience, and that the six seasons in a movie dream was their thing. Probably didn't realise it was a joke written into the show. Stupid Greenblatt. The show's gonna last three weeks! Number 95. Before they found a new home, Community tried to take the show to Hulu, which is also owned by NBC. Both Hulu and Netflix of all people, Netflix turned it down. Netflix said no to something, which made the whole show pretty dead in the water. Number 96. So which network picked them up for season 6? Which Netflix-like heavyweight streaming competitor picked up the troubled cult show? Well, it was Yahoo Screen, of course, who copied Netflix buying Arrested Development by buying their own cult hit show despite having significantly different business models. Everybody loves Yahoo Screen. It'll definitely last. Number 97. Yahoo Screen did not last. RIP in pieces, 2015 to 2016. It was like the community which helped kill it, since they did spend a crazy $42 million on the show for them to only get one season out of it. Now, I'm no business, Sam, but yeah, that, that's pretty bad. Number 98. When Community faded out of existence after season 6, John McHale commented on how all the actors' contracts were up after 6 years, and that each one of them were worth way more than their initial price, mentioning Alison Brie and Gillian Jacobs in particular, who have found work on popular Netflix shows such as Bojack Horseman, Glow and Love. Number 99. We all know the hashtag six seasons in a movie, and that the show somehow managed to get past the first bit of that, but what about the second bit, the movie? There's been talk since 2014 of a movie being possible, but dwindling demand and the star power of their talent means it will only get harder and harder the longer it is left. Number 100. Oh. Number 100. In fact, according to John McHale, one of the biggest roadblocks for a community movie is said to be Donald Glover, 
When asked about it in an interview, McHale said, I don't even think Dan's written the thing, and that they would need to do it with Donald Glover, but he would probably cost $10 million for a day. Eh, yeah, I'll do it. Number 101. The show was recently acquired for distribution by UK broadcaster Channel 4. Channel 4 have a film unit called Film 4, which produced many, many indie darling films, but could they be the ones to save a community movie, to get all the money together, the 10 million for Donald Glover and everyone else, you know, the, lots of money for them, and get them all together again for that one final movie story? Probably not. But, hey, it's a dream we can all hold on to. So that there was 101 facts about community. Do you think a movie will come ever, or are we living in Dean Isle? Let's hope they chang their mind, eh? Let me know in the comments down below, and also tell me who's your favourite character and why is it Annie's boobs? Don't forget to like and subscribe, and in the meantime, oh my goodness, I mean, look at this. A smorgasbord, well, two, videos on screen right now that you're gonna really love. Pick wisely, because it's not just for Christmas, even though it's February. Bye!